And we've got seven Salaam minutes alaikum. left. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, my name is Abu Bakar Falon. My question relates to uh, worshiping Allah. Hmm. As you have said, um, we have been caught middle of um, the whole process. Um, compared to living here, for example, in Norway and very many other places in Europe, whereby you have no choice of praying during the working hours while you are at work. Now, um, if you cannot pray on time, and what I believe, a prayer is one of the most strongest pillar in this Islam. And it's not just to pray, but to pray on time. But if you are not given the choice to pray on time, simply because of your work, or oh, your school cannot allow you to pray. What can we do, brother? Good question. Thank you very much for your question. Did everybody hear the question? Raise your hands if you didn't hear that question. Okay. He said, um, talking about worshiping and, and, and prayer, which is one of the first pillars of worship after acknowledging the Creator exists. What if you're in a place like work or in school where you're forbade from praying on time and you're not allowed to pray on time? How do you reconcile that? You see, <clears throat> the reality is that I have to speak the truth. I cannot get up here and water things down because I'm wasting my life if I do that. The problem with this, and how many of you have ever faced this situation? You're in a place where it's not okay to pray and it's time to pray. I, I'm, I'm in one of those places all the time. They're called airports nowadays. Um, you see, the problem with that is, is that we've un misunderstood who Allah is. As myself and Sheikh Haytham were talking about yesterday, Tawheed is what we are missing. We're missing this so badly that it causes us to not understand how to answer these problems. How many of you want to know how to answer that problem? Do you really want to know? Raise your hand. You see, okay. You see, when you go to work, you go to work to pay your bills, correct? How, raise your hand, how many of you go to work to pay bills? Raise your hand, raise your hand. How many of you go to work just to make money, to buy nice things? Raise your hands. Sisters, you can buy whatever you want with your money. How many of you go to work just to put food on the table, brothers? Pay the lights. You see, this is a problem with our understanding of rububiyyah, of understanding that Allah is Rabb. This is a problem for us. Because if you go to work to pay your bills, guess what your reward for that work is? Paying those bills. That's your reward. In the hereafter, there might not be nothing for you because you did it for the wrong reasons. Anything we do in this life is supposed to be only to worship Allah. No matter what it is. Even if my job is to clean the sewers of Oslo, I should do it knowing that I'm doing it to please Allah. Work is worship according to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Therefore, if I'm doing a work that interferes with that worship, then that work is no longer viable for a Muslim. That's the reality of the matter. That when it's time to pray, you pray. You pray. Allah has created this earth as a masjid according to Ar-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa And there are only a few places you can't pray. And let me tell you, you don't work in any of them. You don't work in any of them. You pray when it's time to pray. There's no one that can stop you from that. Because you have to understand that Allah is Rabb. That money that comes to you is not from your boss. It is not from your job. It is not from anything other than Allah Azza wa Jal has legislated that money to be placed in your hands. And if you are getting that money by disobeying him, I am afraid of what is waiting for you in the next life. I really am afraid. That if you place something before Allah, that thing has become your Rabb. That has become your Lord and Tawheed is thrown out the window. We need to understand that. That look, I don't care what you have going on right now. I need five minutes to pray. This so-and-so fulan and this jack-off can go outside and smoke for 20 minutes and you're telling me I can't pray for five? We need to wake up. We need to wake up and realize that we have rights. I don't care what the law says, I have a human right to worship how I want to worship. As long as that worship is not evil in and of itself. And I don't know how prayer has ever hurt anyone. So these things we have to understand, we have to stand up for them. Because let me tell you something about this world. Freedom isn't free, as they say, but they say it for the wrong reason. Your rights, you have to fight for them. That's the way the world has always existed. Rights are not inalienable, as they say in the United States Constitution. Rights are by what we stand up for. We stand up for our rights, we fight for our rights. 
This is the value of human civilization. This is what has been known of the Muslims since the beginning. We stand up for our rights and our dignities. You will respect me. You don't have to like me. I don't care if you like me or you don't like me. But you will respect me and respect who I am and you will respect my religious values. If you don't like it, then do what you wish. If you fire me because of that, guess what? I have Allah who is Rabb. I have an Allah who is Rabb who will replace what I left for his sake with something better. That is the yaqeen, the certainty that the Muslims have to have. If not, then we're going to continue to be muddled in this mud of degradation and humiliation forever. We have to wake up to this. Hopefully that answers the question. You got to do what you got to do. As they say, do what you got you to do what you got to do. It's time to pray. I got to do what I got to do. You do what you got to do to make that money. Do what you got to do to make those good deeds. Shock, the shock.